Uh, good afternoon, good evening all. Uh, as we all know, many enterprises uh, still rely on their legacy and monolith applications for uh, doing their core business functions. Yeah, so we know that this monoliths and mainframes will have to go. Yeah, we understand modernization looks uh, scary and uh, full of risks. So today I'm going to cover how AWS can help enterprises with modernizing their applications. That means modernization can focus on digitizing the existing services and also innovate new digital offerings. Uh, it's really a lot of content and a lot to cover in 30 minutes. So I'm really gonna try to make sure I cover the most important aspects of it. You can reach out to me through email or LinkedIn if you wanna have a further deep dive. Also, there are a lot of sessions we have done recently at reInvent. I hope you get some good takeaways from this session. So just a little bit about me. I'm uh, Muthi Chabri, Partner Solutions Architect at uh, AWS based in Sydney, Australia. I've been in IT for a little over 20 years at Amazon for roughly 18 months now. Prior to Amazon, I worked in FSI sector as an Enterprise Solutions Architect, currently working closely with AWS partners, uh, helping them with architecting and building solutions, mainly covering migrations, app modernization, data analytics and machine learning domains. I have achieved all 12 certifications and it's helping me understanding the breadth and depth of the services we have. So this quick overview of what we are going to talk about in this session, I'm going to cover modernization on AWS along with some of our customer success stories, then dive into microservices architectures and primarily building blocks of serverless technologies on AWS. Then talk about DevOps on AWS and end the session with some key takeaways. Okay, let's get into it. So we are living in an economy that is increasingly digital. The AWS cloud helps accelerate that digital economy. With over 3 billion smartphone users, over 20 million software developers in the world, and with unlimited cloud resources, businesses can modernize and transform themselves in a rapid pace. I don't think this was possible just five years ago. Most of the enterprises have an application portfolio of, let's say 500 to 2000 applications, and there's a constant need now to modernize and transform processes to create better services for the customers, to optimize costs, or to comply to new regulatory controls. AWS today has got 24 geographical regions, 77 availability zones, 220 plus points of presence, and millions of customers. So why do we need modernization? Our customers want to become more agile so they can innovate and respond to change faster. The applications that organizations need to build today are very different than in the past. They need to scale quickly to potentially millions of users, have global availability, manage petabytes, if not exabytes of data, and respond in milliseconds. These are the common characteristics of modern applications. So they cover use cases such as mobile backends, IoT applications, AI ML workloads, batch processing, microservice backends, and many more. So as we engage with thousands of customers, we identify multiple reasons and drivers to move to the cloud. Customers tell us digital transformation is a top priority, even in this COVID-19 impacted economic times. Agility and staff productivity is also key to many organizations. Development teams come to cloud almost as default nowadays. And uh, of course, staff, uh, yeah, uh, this operational resiliency, scalability, and security are utmost priority for strengthening the operational backbone. But uh, in this COVID-19 times, cost reductions and optimization is also priority. Moving to cloud can actually lower infrastructure management costs. Going global quickly to reach out to wider customer base, IoT, AI, ML are needed for innovative digital offerings. Data center exit is still a driver for many. 
and a decision to outsource applications also can drive shift to cloud. As you contemplate your moves, we want to give guidance on all these. So ultimately, when you make technical decisions, you have to consider your existing application portfolio. You have few options. So firstly, you can start fresh and build new applications. This is an area where many customers start and make sense because you can build with serverless building blocks from the ground up without addressing the technical debt. When it comes to your existing portfolio, you have a few options. You can reduce the amount of stuff you are directly responsible, either by retiring systems or adopting uh, SaaS like you know software as a sol uh, service solutions. You can also uh, do a lift and shift migration to AWS, and most customers benefit from doing this quickly to get out of the data center management onto a common environment. And then it comes to modernizing, you can replatform or refactor. These two options are where we will spend some time today. When we say replatform, we mean moving from a service you manage yourself to a service that AWS can manage for you, such as moving to a managed database or from self managed RabbitMQ to adopting Amazon MQ. So finally, refactoring is where customers see the biggest transformation. Successful customers start by refactoring their most business critical or customer facing applications because that's where they will get the most benefits like uh, lower total cost of ownership, quicker to market. So microservices architectures basically mean an application is made up of independent components that run application process as a service. So services are built for business capabilities and each service performs a single function. APIs act as the front door for applications. It could be to access data, perform business logic, or fetch information from your backend services. Using API gateway, you can create RESTful APIs and WebSocket APIs that enable real-time two-way communication applications. Amazon API Gateway supports containerized and serverless workloads as well as web applications. So the second common integration pattern is using events, which are changes to state. An example of an event is an item being placed in a shopping cart on an e-commerce website or a uh, change in status on a support ticket. So event-driven architectures can improve scalability, fault tolerance, and agility by reducing dependencies between processes and teams. So events are uh, like asynchronous. You don't need to uh, wait for a response to move on to the next step. This improves uh, resilience and uh, reduce dependencies. The tools of event-driven architectures are uh, routers that abstract producers and consumers from uh, each other. Uh, you can publish to the router or consume from it without knowledge of other producers or consumers. Uh, event routers at uh, AWS include uh, uh, EventBridge and SNS. SNS is a simple notification service, uh, event stores, act as buffers holding on to events until the consumer is ready to use them. At uh, AWS, SQS is our serverless queue service. Amazon MQ is another queue service, and it uses standard APIs and protocols like you know, JMS, MQTT. Our customers are increasingly relying on event-driven architectures, those in which actions are triggered in response to changes in data. So to improve application scalability, and resiliency while also reducing the costs. The third pattern is incremental refactoring. It's also called uh, mono to micro. This is really the amazon.com story. This is also known as the uh, strangler pattern. Martin Fowler coined the term strangler pattern after he went on vacation in Southeast Asia and noticed the strangler vines that grow on trees. After a few years, the vines take over the tree and the biomass is more vine than trees. Uh, the key learning is that you are chipping away at your monolithic app 
by setting up APIs and breaking up the monolith application until that, that tree or monolith is like just totally gone. And you've just got the serverless microservices application. So this is why serverless application is growing so fast. A serverless strategy enables customers to focus on things that benefit their customers and not infrastructure management. We launched Lambda six years ago, and today thousands of customers have built applications that already drive trillions of invocations per month. And Lambda continues to grow at a phenomenal rate. One thing that is common across serverless application is they follow the design ideas of the internet and the web. Small pieces, loosely joined. All of these applications are modular, composed from multiple AWS services and customer developed components. It's why we are so focused on delivering lots of integrations in Lambda, Event Bridge, API Gateway, and Step Functions. We want to make it easy to build new applications and functionality through loose coupling with other components. It often starts with APIs managed by API Gateway as the application front door. Events or messages are the communication system in the backend, all coordinated with workflows. Realtor.com processes hundreds of millions of image requests per day. Every image passes through at least one API call and sometimes several. For this customer, the biggest considerations are latency of each request, cost related to really high volumes. They find that API Gateway is able to manage that for them at incredible scale. The reasons customers are adopting a serverless strategy are aligned to what customers are looking for. And these are also areas where we put the most investment. AWS fortunate to have, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of years of engineering experience building applications in the cloud. And we have learned even more from our customers. As we use all of this experience to bake into our services, the lessons we have learned about building in the cloud. The four key areas where we are always innovating to try to provide those simple and powerful capabilities. Agility, this is to help developers and operators move fast. Performance, to support as many workloads as possible. Low cost and pay as you use and built-in security. We see customers building a wide variety of applications with serverless building blocks, but there are a few common areas where they tend to see huge benefits. They often start with IT automation, such as using Lambda functions to validate some configuration each time an EC2 instance is launched. The individual teams might start using Lambda integration with S3 or with Kinesis streams to build data processing applications. And then as experience spreads, multiple teams will start building the whole microservice-based applications. And finally, they often use Lambda in machine learning applications. AWS is trusted by millions of customers around the world, including the fastest growing startups, largest enterprises, and leading government agencies to power their infrastructure increase their agility and to lower costs. AWS offers a comprehensive portfolio of services to support your business as you develop modern applications. I just give you an overview of these services. I won't be able to go uh, in depth uh, just uh, yeah, at the high level. So in dev tool space, AWS Amplify, it's a development tool helps you develop full stack web and mobile apps. I will be covering code commit, code build, code deploy, code pipeline later as part of the DevOps section. Code Artifact is a pay-as-you-go artifact repository service. Cloud Formation is for coding the infrastructure in either JSON or YAML format. AWS CDK is another infrastructure as code tool to define your cloud resources in uh, your familiar programming language uh, like TypeScript or Java or Python or C hash. So coming to compute space, AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service. You can run code without provisioning or managing servers. 
just upload code as a zip file or a container image and uh, yeah so lambda automatically uh, so is allocates the compute execution power and runs your code based on the incoming request uh, aws fargate eks ecs are the containers for they are these services are containers and they will be covered by my colleague ramesh uh, in the next session uh, coming to integration space graphql apis built with aws AppSync give front-end developers the ability to query multiple databases microservices apis from a single graphql point sqs is a fully managed queuing message queuing services it enables you to decouple services and then a simple notification service is a fully managed messaging service for both application to application or application to person communication so step function is a it's a serverless function orchestrator makes it easy to sequence aws lambda functions and uh, multiple aws services into business critical applications api gateway is a fully managed service and makes it easy for developers to create publish maintain monitor and secure apis at any scale app mesh is a service mesh it provides application level networking makes it easy for your services to communicate with each other. Kinesis is a data streaming service. Event Bridge makes it easy to integrate SaaS applications. So when coming to data stores, you have S3. It's a simple storage service. It's an object storage service that offers industry leading scalability, data availability, and S3 is designed for level nines of durability. DynamoDB is a NoSQL DB for key value database. Aurora is a MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database. Uh, the performance availability of uh, commercial grade databases, but it comes at one tenth of the cost. So EFS provides a simple, scalable, fully managed elastic NFS file system for use with AWS cloud services, and you can even use it on the for the on-premise resources. Document DB is for supporting MangoDB workloads. And Elastic Ash allows you to seamlessly set up a scale open source compatible in memory data stores like Memcast or Redis. So let's look at some of the patterns that we have seen how customers are adopting serverless. A lot of customers in the lower left corner where they have monolithic applications and deploying on-prem. So the first step is they do lift and shift to the cloud, such as EC2, and they get the cost savings. For example, US Navy is an another AWS customer moving their workloads from on-prem to the cloud and saving 60% of their costs. And then they use one of the managed container service to bring agility and closer to their nirvana. Some customers choose to containers first, and then move to the cloud. In either case, customers are getting closer to the vision of not having to manage their infrastructure. Then there are customers that are skipping all of that. For example, this was Fannie Mae's adaption pattern. This is not normal and not the most common, but there are these are traditional enterprise IT that are architecting straight for serverless. One of the important benefits of Lambda is that it responds to data in real, near real time. As customers create more data streams, a serverless approach to processing data is attractive. Nielsen Marketing Cloud is doing this at incredibly high scale. They're using Lambda to process 250 billion events per day while maintaining quality, performance, and cost using a fully automated serverless pipeline. Uh, it's a a data management platform used for uh, different campaigns. They get data in and process them to a different ad networks. About this is 55 terabytes of data processed per day. Lambda functions act as workers to update metadata in the Postgres RDS. Lambda workers process files and fans out data to over 100 different ad networks.
as we all know, innovation is the key to an organization's success. To innovate, businesses need capabilities that help them move fast, build simply, and deliver rapidly to their customers. This is where uh, DevOps comes into the culture. Uh, DevOps is a kind of uh, buzzword, so there's a lot of different meanings to it, but at the core is the practice of operations and uh, development. Engineers participating together in the whole application lifecycle process, right from design, development to production support. So really what it means to me is, you know, when you have operators who know something about engineering and engineers who know something about operators. An integral part of DevOps is adopting the culture of continuous integration and continuous delivery data deployment, it's, uh, which is called CI-CD. When a developer commits the code, it passes through various automated stage gates, all the way from building, testing, to deploying applications, from development to production environments. So let's dive into AWS suite of CI CD services to compile, build, and deploy applications. Code Commit, it's a source control service that hosts secure GitHub repositories Code Commit makes it easy for teams to collaborate on code in a secure and highly scalable ecosystem. You don't need to manage any infrastructure for your code repositories. Code Build continuous integration service that compiles source code, run tests, and produces software packages that are ready to deploy on a dynamically created build server. You can integrate third-party test tools with uh, Code Build. And then we have uh, uh, Code Deploy. It's a deployment service that automates software deployments to a variety of compute services. Uh, it can be to Amazon EC2. Uh, if it is for containers, it is uh, Fargate. And if it is serverless, it is Lambda. And even you can deploy to on-premise servers. Code Pipeline is a continuous delivery service that helps you automate your release pipelines for fast and reliable application and infrastructure updates. And CodeStar enables you to quickly develop, build, and deploy applications on AWS. CloudWatch is a monitoring and observability service. AWS X-Ray is a service that helps developers analyze and debug distributed applications. Customers use X-Ray to monitor application traces. These are all fully managed services, and you don't need to spin up any servers and you pay for the usage. So let's talk about a couple of services released by AWS recently in the DevOps space. Uh, as we all know, it's not easy to uh, maintain consistency and compliance for infrastructure that is developed by teams across the enterprise. AWS Proton helps you with automated management for containers and the serverless deployments. You can see all deployed services in a central dashboard and upgrade them to your uh, infrastructure, latest infra infrastructure definition with one click. With AWS Proton, you can gain increased control of your cloud infrastructure while accelerating the pace of innovation for your development teams. So Amazon DevOps Guru, it's a machine learning power service that makes it easy for developers and operators. Uh, it's uh, mainly for automatically detecting operational issues, and it generates uh, insights with a summary of related anomalies. Uh, you don't need machine learning experience to use this service. Uh, DevOps Guru uses uh, a sort of pre-trained machine learning models to detect anomalies. Uh, Amazon is used years of uh, internal operational expertise to train these models. So let's talk about uh, some of the technology decisions that are key to drive your business strategy. So every decision you make will impact where your time is spent and how your teams operationalizes. This applies across every aspect of your application. Uh, modern applications can be characterized along five vectors. They're uh, number one, architectural patterns, uh, it's uh, application should be built with modular services and service oriented ar architecture gives you the flexibility and agility. Number two is operational model. It should be as serverless and automated as possible. Number three, software delivery practices. It has to be highly automated and standardized. 
incorporating DevOps and agile methodologies is very important. Number four, management and governance. It's everyone's responsibility, not leaving it to the admins. Ownership should be at all levels. And finally, number five is data strategy. Keep the data distributed and make it fit for purpose. Make sure data comes from single source of truth across the organization and it is like available, it is ubiquitous. Applications built in this way gives you agility and you can innovate for your customers. Okay, let's wrap up with the next steps to begin your modernization journey. So maintaining executive buy-in, alignment of critical organizational leaders and commitment of executive sponsorship is very important throughout the modernization journey. Apply insights and partner tools. There's a lot of tools available in AWS Marketplace and you can use AWS Partner Network. Move fast on small projects and learn. Create lighthouse projects and learn quickly and then scale. We have seen 84% migrations that are on plan involve a partner. 50% of the customers that do migrations on their own get stalled in a major way. Hence, one of your, our key recommendation is to urge you to bring on board a transformation or migration expert. Yeah, thank you so much for the time. And uh, yeah, please feel free to reach out to me by email or LinkedIn uh, if you have any questions. Thank you 